Hi good people. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Fiona's uh this is Fiona Unis. If you're new here, kindly hit the subscribe button, like, comment, share my content with your friends. If you're coming back, karibu sana and I appreciate the love. So in this channel we deal more on uh, homemaking, DIYs, cleaning, cleaning motivation and anything in between uh, home improvement. So today I'm doing something different. I want us to talk about nannies, how we have employed them, how many. But before then, I'm going to let you know my pro my plans for the long holiday. First of all, I need to buy. Uh, I want us to repaint my house. As you can see, my kids have really drawn all over. So I want to to get them involved because they are the ones who discolored the house. They are the ones who have done all these. Eh? So I want to get them involved in repainting. Our house is getting repainted this holiday as we prepare for Christmas. So if you haven't subscribed, kindly keep it here. Subscribe so that when you're doing the renovations, you'll be among the very first to see it. So I also want to know which house child that you don't like most for me i don't like anything to do with laundry i don't like cleaning clothes i don't like hanging them i don't even like folding them i just don't like laundry in full the only thing i like about laundry is i think just wearing them so kindly in the comment section share what what part of uh house chores you don't like me it could be cleaning dishes could be washing dishes, cooking, cleaning the house, um, folding clothes, alleging clothes in the closet. What is that uh, house sale that you don't like? For me, anything to do with laundry, I'm not a fan. The good thing is I have made washing easier. But after washing, you have to fold them so that you can store them in a, in a well-arranged manner. So I always find myself having to fold them, but I don't like it, but uta do. So these clothes, um, I washed them last week. I've done two cycles of washing. Aki bila kunja. So that's why you see my, my, this bed. Currently this bed is my storage because I don't have a nanny. And my kids are sleeping one on top and the other one down. I have a decker here. So... Which house god do you hate most? Okay. Which house shawl do you not like? You do it, but you don't like doing it. For me? But anyway, so today, I wanted, that, I wanted us to talk about uh, nannies. Like, have you employed nannies? How was it? Was it smooth? For me, due to the nature of my work, I have had to have nannies. Whenever I work, we have strict uh, timings and deadlines, so you just can't just live without a nanny. So I have had several. Um, someone wrote that if you have several nannies, you're toxic. Maybe I am. Eh? <laughs> I don't know anyway. But I have had nannies. So today, allow me to share about my uh, my best, my worst. And my in between nanny. So hmm, let me start. My first nanny came when I was uh, eight months pregnant with my first born. My first born is now eight. Is now seven, turning eight in January. So my first nanny came then. I even don't remember her name, her face. I don't remember anything. I don't recall anything about her. I got her from a bureau, but she was uh, a good one. She stayed. But I don't know why I never keep names. I think sometimes you get a high turnover that you can't even keep up with the names. So, my first nanny uh, stayed for... She came when I was eight months pregnant. And she only left when my baby was around one and a half years. And then from there, hey, hey, from there drama started. Drama itself. I would get a nanny and they would leave. I would get a nanny today, they stay for two weeks and they they leave. So I was like, hey, am I that toxic or 
you see nannies choosers they are like you see like though you say you don't like your job i think i believe nannies feel the same way so i kept um thinking i'm the one who is doing the wrong thing because how can you have like two nannies in a month but then i, I had a nanny that was from busia so when she came she was young uh, I had liked that I had fallen in in friendship, not in love, and I liked her. So to Kawatu to Kosawa, one month. The second month, I was at I was at home on that day, that particular day. That nanny just nilim to and she left just like that. She didn't come back. She just left. So when she left. I was like, oh, and she didn't come back after an hour. I tried calling her. I think she had already blocked me because the phone was not going through. So I was worried. I called the mama that had given me her and I asked her, have you talked to her? She said no. So I was like, do I report the case to the police? Mama, what do I do? So I was just there worried. Then I realized, ah, maybe she went somewhere else. Maybe I was she got a better job with a better pay so i let it slide i didn't even report but then the same same week i think it was on a tuesday early in the week because eh? uh, at the end of the week that it was on uh, saturday she called and she was like i want to come back i i asked her where are you where did you go she and then she was like you know uh, our jirani who used to live next to us had looked for her other job and she wanted but when she went to that house she found that there was too much work because the uh, the people that were living in the house were around seven she could miss meals so i wanted to i propped her father because i wanted to know who that neighbor was and she disclosed who it was so of course i i, I decided to let the neighbor know that i know because I was having a very high turnover of DMs. I would get a nanny today. Then after two weeks, she's gone. Another nanny. So I realized, and I was still paying the burial fee. I realized I can never have a nanny stay in my house as long as I have not confronted that neighbor so that she can know that I already know she's the one who is transferring my nannies. So I, involved the, I talked to the lad lady who came and we made that call to the lady that lady, uh, that girl, and she disclosed that nini, as in we are Jirani, they come to after your cars. So in front of everyone in the plot, water was kajua bona was tena wawa hawakai, because eventually I was not the only one who was having a high turnover. We were many of us and all the nannies would come and go. And so we would ask, hi, kwani wana kujua wana chochana, and then they left. But we came to realize if you have a bad neighbor, you can have a very tight high turnover of DMs. You might blame yourself, you might think you're toxic, but hey, there's someone somewhere who is just eating the beer you fee. As in they come, she looks, she hooks them up with someone else and she gets some payment. So yeah, uh, we moved, we later moved from that plot because everything felt toxic. And then um, I had some in between, I don't recall, but not so many then. After, after moving out from that plot, I had a nanny who stayed for another two years. Um, then I had a nanny when I was expecting my second born. She came when I was... No, I had a nanny before then. Eh? Um, no, who came first? When I was expecting my second born, I, have an, I had a nanny who was a form four liver. That nanny was good, good, good. She always uh, adored my son because when I gave birth, I gave birth to a boy. To them, in their family, there was three girls. So, uh, mine was, my boy was the, only, the, the little boy she had met. She really, really loved my son. And she only left because she went to attend college. Which I was very proud of her because having a form four liver who can take care of a newborn baby was just a big risk. But she did it quite well and I really liked it. So, after that, hey, Apple Sasa Nikapata, another lady, she was elderly, she was uh, 10 years my senior. Uh, hey, this, this lady was from Luya. 
but she used to stay in Huruma. She used to drink every Sunday and never come back on Sundays because you give them enough for Sunday. I used to give her enough for Sundays. But when I realized when she goes on Sunday, she doesn't come back. I decided to give her enough for on the, on Saturday in the evening. When I come from work, I just let her go because it's near. So she goes, drinks, drinks. Eh? Na Monday kifika. That lady even doesn't know where she is. So she used to come every Monday afternoon and apologize, call me mom, call my husband daddy, and apologize and do all that stuff. But it made me get some um, show cause why emails in my workplace because every Monday I had to have reasons why. I used to give reasons, fake excuses why I was not going to work. So I realized our relationship was getting toxic. And because she was not willing to change, I talked, I sat her down and told her, her, uh, whatever her behavior was ruining my work but she was not ready to change so i eventually dismissed her then i looked for another nanny why oh, that one was god sent she stayed in my house for two years and a half and she was good just good eh? then everybody no one is perfect but i liked her so after that uh, I decided to, these are some clothes that got paint. Our house is getting painted outside, so the kids learned on them and now they have paint. So after that, I got a nanny. Uh, after she left, she left uh, early this year. And this year, I've not been lucky with the nannies. I'm also not looking for a nanny aggressively because at the moment, my work is um, a bit, I would say, flexible. Because if my kids leave for school, both of them are in school. When they leave for school, they'll come back in the evening. By then, I'll have gone to work and come back. Um, I'm working on an 8 to, eight to 5 job. So it's easier to manage. And um, I'm really not looking for a nanny at the moment. Maybe next year if, if, the, if my job gets busier. But for now, my job is flexible and I'm happy to be with my kids. So, my worst nanny, I can't say she was uh, my worst per se. She, I think she had her own, um, she had her own problems. When she came, she had left a seven-month-old baby, something I didn't know, because I would obviously not have taken her. But now she was already in Nairobi, what do I do? I bought her the, um, the, the medicine to stop the milk flow, but that girl will never bathe. That girl will never shower. That girl would, I don't know, you'd get, she was on her, you'd get her on her monthly period and she doesn't shower, the house would smell, the bed would smell. As much as they don't share a bed, no nanny shared a bed with my kids, the bedroom would really smell awful. So, um, I never let her cook because anything about her was just not, not nice. Uh, my best, I thank God for the times we spent with them. I didn't have no, uh, say, a worst nanny. Because I always believe in, if they come and serve you for one month, your child has grown for that one month. Unless they, of course, steal, steal from you, hurt your kid, or um, mostly, I think, hurting your kids. Or, yeah, hurting your kids is the most painful thing that the nannies can do. Stealing from you, whatever is stolen, you can always recover. But hurting your kids, like those who are who sexually molest kids, who fight them, who physically hurt them, those ones are the worst nannies. But I thank God in my time of employing, I never uh, fell into hands of such a nanny. And I always, what I, my biggest fear was uh, getting home and find that my kid was physically abused or sexually abused. So I always, uh, I was always in fear, but I always prayed God. That is the fear of every parent because sometimes you realize that the damage was too much and you can't handle it. Uh, with my, let me say, uh, my bigger, my only piece of advice would be, do your due diligence. If you're feeling unsafe, yeah, you can invest in uh, nanny cameras. At least you can be sure whatever is happening at home. If you have a kid who is not talking, a kid who is not who is not yet able to 
uh, express themselves, I would advise to get a nanny camera. These days, nannies have become, some nannies have become too weird. I invest on a nanny camera so that you can always watch, so that you can stop the damage before it goes out of hand. If at all, okay, with these big kids, you need to talk to them. They need to know when they are getting molested sexually or physically. They need to know when, when someone is uh, interfering with their human rights. So having a nanny is good, but also having a nanny requires a lot of prayers, a lot of talk, a lot of, I don't know. For now, I'm okay being with my kids because I'm sure where they are. Like, you know, they are praying outside. I'm okay with them being outside. I'll watch them. I'll come bathe them. I'll come feed them. I'm okay. But I'm not saying I'm employing a nanny is bad. I'm just saying do your due diligence. Put measures in place so that you're sure your kids are not getting molested or physically abused. Also, make sure that your nanny feels like she's at home. Treat her right. Maintain the employer-employee relationship so that, hey, at least usipiwa na butuwa kikuacha because they leave you, obviously, one day. Anyway, you can share your story in the comment section. Let me know how it has been with nannies. For me, it has been, how do I say it? As I have explained, I have had the good times. I have had high turnover and I'm still there. So, share in the comment section. Let me know what, how it has been with your nannies. There are some people who have been lucky to have one nanny all through their children's lives. There are some who have been unlucky to have several. Uh, yeah, but the, children's, the children are still growing. So, all in all, we need the nannies and they need us. Just do your due diligence and... I wish you well. So share in the comment section. Let me know how it has been for you. I'll be glad to know that I was not alone with the height and over. I'll be glad to know that you, may, you might have experienced height and over and you realized you're not the toxic partner. So, kindly share. I'll be waiting.